At KPMG, it's people who make the difference for their clients. With talented teams leveraging the right technology to uncover insights that illuminate opportunity. KPMG advisors embed themselves in their clients' business, working together as true team members to help grow and transform their enterprise. Ready to make the difference together? Visit their website at visit.kpmg.us backslash transformation to learn more. If you are a lover of affirmations or you've just heard about how powerful they can be, then you are going to love the Daily Affirmations for Women podcast, created by the Women's Meditation Network and hosted by the amazing Jody Agard. Every morning, you'll receive an episode that is dedicated to one specific affirmation so you can have the space to reflect on it and receive the power within it. Follow and start listening now to the Daily Affirmations for Women podcast on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2270. The past doesn't matter. What surviving a war zone can teach you about finance. By Wanderer of millennial-revolution.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your host. Hey there, and welcome to another bonus Sunday episode where I share an article from one of the other podcasts in our network. Today's post comes from Optimal Finance Daily, where articles covering all things money are read to you every day. So with that, here's Diana with the post and commentary as we optimize your life. The past doesn't matter. What surviving a war zone can teach you about finance by Wanderer of millennial-revolution.com. Before I lost my mind and walked away from a cushy six-figure paying tech job to travel the world and learn the secrets of successful rich people, most of the traveling I did was to and from a little city called San Jose, California, commonly known as Silicon Valley. Most of the time I visited, I spent my time in conference rooms, eating expensive tacos and drooling over the newest Tesla model that just came out. And on one of my visits, my entire outlook on life changed. Let me explain. I was still a few years away from retirement and I had just changed teams at work. I was flying in to meet my new director, a guy by the name of Mario. And even before I met him, I knew there was something up with this guy, mostly because try as I might, I just could not dig up any dirt on him at all. Not that I didn't try. Like with most people, when a new boss comes in, the first thing I did was ask around. What's he like? What's his deal? Is he a raging psychopath? You know, standard stuff. But this time when I did it, to my absolute shock, every single person had nothing but good things to say. Sales liked him. Customer support thought he could walk on water. Corporate gave him a thumbs up. And even the other engineers respected him. When was the last time those four groups agreed on anything? And when I met him, I could see why. Turns out he was known in the valley as kind of a fixer. When shit hit the fan and your chips weren't working and customers were screaming bloody murder, you'd send Mario in. And so when I got a chance to see him in action, I paid attention. Raise your hand if you've ever been in this situation. A project's on fire, nobody knows what's going on, and management doesn't have a clue how to get out of it. Worse than that, people are just wasting time calling pointless meetings and finger pointing, desperately trying to save their jobs by making sure someone else gets blamed when the heads start to roll. Sound familiar? I thought so. So here's what Mario would do. He'd come into a room full of people squabbling about who effed up or who should have done what, and he'd just go, guys, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter what went wrong. What do we do now? And it worked. Immediately, everyone shut up, sat there silently as their brains slowly switched from politician mode back to engineering mode. Engineer, well, we need to know whether the issue is in the mask or in the metal layer. Mario, how do we find out? Engineer, we'll run a full chip sim. Engineer 2, why didn't we run the sim before we went to production? Mario, shut up, it doesn't matter, can you run it? Engineer, sure. Mario, great, do it. And that's what he kept doing. Every time someone started to dwell on the past and start to lay blame, he'd shut it down and keep everyone thinking about the next move. Even if that person was his boss, even if that person was the CEO. And the strange thing is, at the end, once the crisis was over, the people who were previously at each other's throats would be patting each other on the back for pulling together. 
So knowing a good idea when I see one, I courageously stole it and started doing it myself, both at work and at home. And like with Mario, it worked like a charm. So for example, when the missus and I would get lost on our way somewhere, a frequent occurrence when traveling the world, rather than devolve into, you should have downloaded the map or you should have reminded me to download the map, we'd just go, doesn't matter, what do we do now? And like that, we'd be on our way again. It's such a deceptively simple trick, but something so profoundly useful because it immediately stops you from dwelling in the past and you start solving the actual problem. I've spent countless hours listening to countless people complain about their own personal money problems. And the number one reason people give for not changing is because they can't stop dwelling on the past. Oh, I can't. I'm in too much debt. Oh, I can't. I picked the wrong degree. Oh, I can't. I'm too old to change. I get it. You've made mistakes. Literally all of us have made mistakes. The difference between really successful people and everyone else is that they, like Mario, don't spend time moaning about what could have been. They spend time fixing the problem instead. It doesn't matter how far you've tumbled as long as you never stop climbing. So repeat after me. Look into a mirror if you're listening to this in the bathroom or are perhaps starring in a Lifetime movie. It doesn't matter what went wrong. What do we do now? About a year later, I had a chance to meet up with Mario again in San Jose. And after gushing about how brilliant his technique was, I asked him, how in the world did you learn that? His reply, it's simple. I grew up in a war zone. Despite his Italian sounding first name, Mario is actually Lebanese. And from the 1970s to the early 2000s, Lebanon's history can be summarized as a mixture of horrible civil war and horrible regular war. And as Mario explained, When a cluster bomb takes out the top half of an apartment building or a car bomb goes off in a marketplace full of your friends and family, you don't have the luxury of dwelling over the past. Questions like, why did we have to come to this market today? Or why did we choose to live in this neighborhood instead of that neighborhood? Become utterly meaningless when everything's literally on fire. In that environment, you only have two choices. Pick up a bucket and help put the fire out or stand there and watch more people die. Fortunately, Mario's family eventually managed to escape that hole and immigrate to America. Now the only bombs he has to deal with are of the Jaeger-induced variety. But those experiences shaped him into the person he is today. One of my favorite parts of post-retirement is getting to travel around the world, meeting exceptional people, and learning about what experiences they had that made them the way they are. And the more I do it, the more I realize that the more experiences I collect, the more everyone can benefit. Mario's experiences and the lessons he learned did not come easy, to say the least. But those lessons we can learn as well if we just know where to look. It doesn't matter what went wrong. What do we do now? Because I met Mario back there in San Jose, I learned that lesson. And because you just heard this, now you have too. You just listened to the post titled, The Past Doesn't Matter what surviving a war zone can teach you about finance by wanderer of millennial-revolution.com. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Whatever major decisions you're dealing with, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement, learning the positive coping skills you need to thrive. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you need to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. And I really love the flexibility that comes with BetterHelp. The ability to message your therapist at any time goes a long way for making the therapy accessible and helping you feel like you're getting the assistance you need and when you need it. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash OHD today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash OHD. ¿Estás disfrutando de mi podcast? Thanks to Babbel, I know what that means. Do you? You don't have to pay hundreds for a tutor or waste your time with language apps that are little more than games. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts 
to help you speak a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel is designed by real people for real conversations, filled with language learning tools that are approachable, accessible, rooted in real-life situations, and delivered with conversation-based teaching. And that's what puts Babbel ahead of the rest for me. It teaches you a lot of the lingo that you won't necessarily learn in school, but instead would learn only by speaking with locals. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash OHD. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash OHD. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash OHD. Rules and restrictions may apply. Such great advice in this article. I couldn't agree more. There's something oddly optimistic about imagining Mario saying, shut up, it doesn't matter. Because what he's saying underneath that is, this is figureoutable. Now let's get to work. While there is something to be said about learning from our mistakes and understanding them so that we don't repeat them, there's a degree of dwelling on them that simply isn't helpful. If your mental energy is tied up in feeling bad about your debt, you have less capacity to dig out of it. Just like our money is a powerful resource, our energy is a crazy powerful resource. And it's amazing how much we waste it by dwelling on the past. Over time, we might even see those things that we thought were mistakes actually serve a purpose. Recently on an interview, I was asked to talk about the money mistake I most regret. I used to answer this kind of question by pointing out the 30 grand of debt I got into for no good reason. But on second thought, I said that I have no regrets. I actually think I needed to feel some financial pain to be able to appreciate the good financial habits I have now. I really like the life I've built and the mistakes I made along the way got me to where I am. So no, I don't regret them. But now after reading this article, I kind of wish I would have answered that question about my regrets with, shut up, it doesn't matter. And that will do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and weekend and I'll be back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.